Um, yeah, he came to us on the 18th. The story is a citizen called DNR. Two officers went down, and uh, it was getting dark, and they tracked her for him into the woods because there was some snow on the ground. And they found him on a low-hanging branch, caught him up. Real bird was real dull, uh, poorly responsive, wings were drooped, still standing. Uh, and then we got it to us the next day, and the blood lead concentration was 49 micrograms per deciliter. And that is uh, elevated uh, to the point of almost always causing clinical signs. Uh, the, we put out a paper, sort of that did a literature search looking at what levels to be concerned about with free flying raptors. In human children, anything above five microliters per deciliter, micrograms per deciliter or lead concentration is considered elevated and worth treating or investigating. In our birds, we usually say above 20 is something that will often cause clinical signs, but it's questionable. Some birds that are 20 or 30 micrograms may not act sick, sick at all, especially vultures. Uh, and then once you get to 40, pretty much all the eagles are gonna act sick in some way. And like I say, she was at, or he was at 49. Above 60, it's pretty dangerously high. Um, and so, uh, and anytime, any bird that is basically over 100 generally is gonna be, a, a, uh, is gonna die from lead poisoning. What we do is primarily initially supportive care, so fluids, you gotta hydrate them. So we give them tons of, uh, of in eagles, we place an IV catheter uh, and run them on IV fluids and give them nutritional support once the GI tract is moving. Take an x-ray and see if there's fragments in the GI tract. Only about 50% of cases are you gonna find uh, metal inside the inside the GI tract. Uh, other cases they're, they're toxic, but you don't see any of the material. Um, and then we do a process or a, uh, a treatment called chelation, which binds the lead in circulation and it's excreted out the urinary system. And then we every 48 hours monitor the lead. So we watched it go from about 50 to I think it was mid 30s, and the last reading was 20, which is enough that should be. Um, uh, sort of a more normal attitude, and the bird is much more normal now. I mean, it's reactive. It's still a tiny bit dull, but it moves around its cage pretty well. Uh, do you think you get contamination eating a, a deer gut pile? Yeah, so that's the, 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 the thought, and presumably this is the case, although it's a little bit hard to prove with certainty. Right. The, main, the main route of exposure is from, from spent ammunition in either uh, field dressed deer without buried gut piles or in, a, in an animal that was shot got away and then died for some other died from those wounds or maybe it survived and then got hit by a car and died uh you think bald eagles do that i know golden eagles do. oh yeah these are scavengers absolutely these birds in the winter time when our when our our lakes are frozen yeah they're they're eating mostly carrion no doubt um yeah they don't mind at all uh, uh do, doing that scavenging so yeah i do think so um, the other possibility is pest species. You know, somebody shoots a uh, somebody shoots a groundhog and throws it out back. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna come eat it. Of course, most of those, the ammunition that you're using for those pest species is lead. So, um, and it only takes about the size of a grain of rice. It's plenty to cause lethal lead intoxication in an eagle. So I would say probably. It's pretty evenly split in eagles. It's mm -hmm. close to 50% admitted of lead toxicity, 50% have um, trauma. Uh, we actually take lead samples on all of our vultures that are admitted mm -hmm. and all of our eagles, whether they show signs or not. And what do you think percentage-wise of those species? I'd say at least okay. a quarter of them have what we would consider elevated lead, but mm -hmm. they're subclinical. Yeah. Um, they try to use, yeah, one, yeah. They try to use, uh, Turkey vultures as a as a uh, experimental model for uh, condors. Mm -hmm. no, no, looks good. And they fed those things lead, and they would they would puke them up, and they'd re. This was for epitoxin, the research refuse. They fed them so much lead, and only two of them, I think, got sick and died. Some of them had incredibly high lead levels. Gotcha. So there's definitely species differences. Yeah. So these are bands from the U.S. Geological Survey. Correct. And we've been they've been birds have been being banded for more than a hundred years, hundreds of years probably. And uh, so there's no tracking device, but if the birds recovered for some other reason, then they can track it back and find out its history. What's the um, expected release date for this bird? The bird was still a little a little bit dull to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually, like if this were a red tail or a golden, mm -hmm. it wouldn't bother me that it's, it's not trying to bite us more. Yeah. 
So, I mean, even though his lead numbers are down. <laughs> I mean, it's only, we've only had him for, what? Two weeks. Two, yeah, a week and a half. So, uh, I'm hoping next week.